Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because we finally get to take a look at the new second generation Intel Core Ultra. In fact, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V here in the new Asus ZenBook S14. And I've been using this laptop for the past two weeks. Really impressed with battery life and performance from these new second generation Core Ultra chips. And the way Asus has packaged this all up in the new ZenBook S14 is really second to none. It's using their brand new Serra aluminum material, which is basically ceramic aluminum. I love the feel of it. It looks absolutely amazing. And they are offering the S14 in two different color variants. So you can get the darker version or the lighter version. Oversized glass covered trackpad, their chiclet style single zone backlit keyboard, and of course, since we're working with a brand new ZenBook S14, we've got an absolutely beautiful 3K 120Hz OLED display. And I've said it before in a couple of my reviews, but these are some of my favorite panels on the market. Filming this screen, no matter how you go about it, trying to film this screen to come across like it looks in real life in a video, just isn't going to do it justice. Super deep blacks, very vibrant colors. Again, I mean, 3K, this thing looks really, really good. 14 inch panel here, and it is touch screen. Like I mentioned, they've got their smart gesture trackpad here. So over on the right hand side, we can change the brightness. Left hand side, we can actually adjust the volume. And during video playback, you can scrub right at the top. As you can see, it is a backlit keyboard. It's just a single zone white LED. And as for sound, this has a quad speaker setup tuned by Harman Kardon. This thing actually puts out some bass. It sounds really good, even though we're working with a very thin and light laptop. In fact, this is only coming in at 2.65 pounds and it's 0.47 inches thin. When it comes to I.O., over here on the right hand side, we've got a full size USB 3.2 port. Over on the left hand side, full-size HDMI, dual USB 4, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. But aside from the overall design and this beautiful display, the main claim to fame with this unit is that new CPU from Intel, especially when it comes to their new iGPU, known as the Intel Arc 140V. And when it comes to the overall specs of the ZenBook S14, we've got that Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. This is the second generation Intel Core Ultra chip, up to 4.8 gigahertz, and they've taken the ridiculous core count from the first generation on down. We've now got eight cores and eight threads. It also has a new AI Boost NPU with up to 47 tops of AI performance. It also has the 140V Arc i GPU with eight XE2 cores. This will clock up to 1950 megahertz, and this is based on Battle Mage architecture from Intel. 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM, and this is memory on package. With these new Core Ultra chips, the memory is actually baked into the CPU itself, so there's no way to upgrade it, but they can keep this much more efficient and run it a lot faster. We'll take a look in just a bit. It's got a 1TB M.2 NVMe PCIe 4.0 SSD, 120Hz 14-inch OLED display, 3K resolution, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 500 nits HDR peak brightness, and it's 100% DCI-P3. We've also got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, that quad speaker system, and a 72 watt hour battery. You can charge this up from 0 to 60% in 49 minutes. Moving in a bit closer so we can get a better look at everything. As you can see, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, and performance has been really great with this. They did take this down to 8 cores and 8 threads. If you remember correctly, the first gen Ultra chips had 16 cores and 22 threads, at least the Ultra 7s. And in my opinion, that was real overkill for a thin and light laptop, you know, trying to get the best battery life out of it. I think this was a good choice by them. But another major change here with the second gen Ultra chips is the RAM configuration. You can see that this is running much faster, 8,523 megahertz. We've got 32 gigs in this, but it's actually on the die itself. So it's on this Core Ultra 7 258V. There's no way that you can upgrade this. And so far I've seen 16 and 32 gig configurations. I'm sure down the road we'll see something with much more, but most of the laptops coming out with these new Core Ultra 7 chips, 16 to 32. And my favorite part here, the new Intel Arc 140V GPU. You see this says 16 gigs here. I guess it's allocated from the BIOS. I think we can change this and it will change right here. So if we went with eight, it would say eight gigs. But since we've got a 32 gig system, we can take half that RAM for that GPU. And this new iGPU is based on the Intel Arc Battle Mage architecture. 
much more efficient. We've still got eight CUs here and it doesn't boost up super high. With this chip, 1950 megahertz, but it's a huge upgrade from the first generation Core Ultra chips. When it comes to controlling performance with the new ZenBook S14, we're going to be using my ASUS. The fan profile here is really going to dictate what kind of TDP we're running at. Whisper mode, very low TDP. This thing doesn't make any noise. And for the most part, I mean, doing web browsing, 4K video playback, document editing, email checking, you can keep this in whisper mode, no problem at all. Got a standard, performance, full speed mode. With this, I have seen it boost up to around 37 watts. And for all of my benchmarks and gaming we're going to be doing, I will be in full speed mode. But keep in mind, I've got a video coming up showing you how efficient this is with gaming at lower TDPs. And it's really impressive. So we'll take it down to around 15, test out a bunch of games. And that's something I'm really excited to show off. So definitely keep an eye on the channel. Now, the first thing I want to go through here are some benchmarks. We will be taking a look at some AAA gaming on this machine. Then I want to talk about battery life because the efficiency of this new chip is very, very impressive. First up, Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 2,746, multi-core coming in at 11,007. If we take a look at the Core Ultra 155H, you can see that the new second gen Core Ultra chip is beating out that single core by quite a bit, but multi on the 155H is coming ahead. And one thing to keep in mind here is with that chip, it's got 16 cores and 22 threads. We're only working with eight cores and eight threads here. Next up, we've got Cinebench R24. Single core over here, 119. It's beaten out the Apple M1 Max, M1 Ultra, and even the Ryzen 7 5800X. And then checking out multi-core over here, 663. Again, eight cores, eight threads, but it is beaten out the Apple M1 and the Intel Core i7 1280P. Now we need to check out some GPU benchmarks. 3D Mark Night Raid. 36,370, and I wanted to compare this to one of the latest and greatest iGPUs on the market, the Radeon 890M that comes with the Ryzen AI HX370. Over there, we scored a 33,478. So the new 140V iGPU from Intel, at least in this synthetic, is beating out that 890M, and I also ran TimeSpy. We scored a 4,356. Checking out that 890M in the Ryzen AI 9 HX370, 4056. So again, this new 140V iGPU from Intel in this synthetic is beating out that 890M, but now it's time to test out some real world gaming. And the first one I wanted to go to was one that really didn't perform well on the 155H, Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1080p low settings with XESS set to balanced, we're seeing an average of 67 FPS. Not bad at all, and given that we're not at a super high TDP here, remember performance mode has kind of a boost up to 35 watts. We're really sitting at around 30 watts right now running this game, but there is a lot more that we can get out of this. One thing I was really interested in testing out was some FSR 3 frame gen with Cyberpunk 2077 on this new Arc I GPU. And yeah, definitely looks like we're getting much better performance out of it going from an average of around 67 FPS up to an average of 89. I definitely had to test out Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1080 medium XESS set to balance, seeing an average of around 86. This is a lot more than the 155H offered. And yeah, I mean, uh, not bad. I also tested this using AMD's Fidelity CAS, just set to balance, and the frame rate was up over 90 FPS, but we went back to XESS just to kind of even everything out. So this one I wasn't really sure about. We're at 1080 medium FSR 3.1 frame gen on with no scaling. Looks really good on the built-in OLED display, and obviously I'm using my game capture right now just to make it a bit easier. In my upcoming gaming test video, we will go back to this game and test out some XESS, but right now we're seeing an average of around 70 FPS. The next one I wanted to test here was Spider-Man Miles Morales. We're at 1080p, high settings with XESS set to balance. I actually didn't expect it to run this well at high settings. I figured I'd have to drop it on down, but sure enough, we're seeing averages in the mid 70s with this game.
And the final one here is Red Dead 2, 1080 FSR set to balanced. And with the settings, it's really hard to kind of explain what I got going on here, but it's basically a low medium mix with the slider bar in the graphic settings on this game, which is something I absolutely hate. We're six clicks up from the lowest. So far, gaming on these new Core Ultra chips has worked out really well, and with those new XE2 cores, I think we're going to see some great performance at lower TDPs, and again, I will have a video coming up very soon. I want to test this at those lower 15 watt TDPs on up. We'll kind of face it off against the 780M right now, and maybe even the HX370. But the final thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life, and this is pretty amazing. We've got a 72 watt hour battery in this unit and in balanced mode, 1080p video streaming from YouTube with screen brightness set to 50%, 16 hours and 37 minutes. Super impressed by what we're seeing here, but it can get much better. Now this was streaming using Wi-Fi 7. If you're doing native 1080 video playback from the internal hard drive, not connected online, streaming anything, screen brightness set to 30%, 23 hours and 17 minutes. So these new Core Ultra chips are very efficient. It really comes down to the way they've designed everything. They've gotten rid of a lot of the, what I consider unnecessary cores, bringing it to eight cores, eight threads. And with that RAM baked into the Core Ultra chip itself, it is much more efficient. But the downside is you can't upgrade the RAM in these thin and light laptops. Now, I do wanna mention that for a very long time now, for a few years, we really haven't been able to upgrade the RAM in these thin and light laptops anyway. Most of the time, it's soldered to the board, and a lot of people have gotten used to that, but I know I have seen some people complaining about not being able to upgrade it. Overall, love the design here of the new Asus ZenBook S14, and I will have more videos coming up. I definitely want to get some more gaming tests out of the way with that new Core Ultra chip, because there's a lot more that we can get out of it, and taking that wattage down, showing you what it can do at those lower wattages for possibly in the future handhelds, is something we'll be exploring very soon. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you want to see tested on this ZenBook S14, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links to their official website in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.